it needed a lot of work. Okay. Um, so it was easy enough to get them to, to go lower because it needed a lot of work. So I did an FHA, so Federal Housing Administration, 203K, K is in Kevin, um, loan. And uh, that's where you, you know, wrap the rehab into the loan. Are you tired of trying to keep ahead in the rat race only to have so much of your hard earned money going to the tax collector? Equity doesn't pay the bills. Retirement savings don't pay you now and there are only 24 hours in a day to work. The only solution is passive income that pays you 24 seven now, not 40 years from now. From vetted investment opportunities to tax saving strategies. Let John guide you through all the confusion and take control of your financial life in pursuit of financial freedom. So sit back, relax, and welcome to the Wealth and Freedom Nexus. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Wealth and Freedom Nexus podcast. As always, I'm your host, uh, John Rickgarn, investor, educator, and realtor. Uh, sorry for the delay in uh, getting this and a little bit uh, change, uh, just getting a new uh, computer and sound system uh, set up. So hopefully the audio is just as good as the previous episodes. Uh, you know, I'll see how the editing goes once this gets published here in two days. But feel free to you know reach out with any comments, questions, suggestions. Uh, hard, hard to believe that this is episode number 70. Uh, the Wealth and Freedom Nexus podcast has been going on strong since November of 2021. A uh, new episode has dropped uh, every single Wednesday since then. Uh, no pod fade at all here. Uh, that is definitely a problem in this industry. There's a lot of podcasts, and I've come across many of them that just, for whatever rhyme or reason, they just either completely drop off or they get really inconsistent. It gets to be once a week, then every other week, then every month, then every other month. And I've seen some where they, like, snowball it or... Uh, whatnot, uh, mothball it, I guess I should say. And you don't hear a thing for a year, year and a half. So as always, uh, if you are listening to this, thank you for the listenership and the support. Uh, be sure to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and even a written review if you are an iTunes listener. Uh, really helps get the show out there so more people can find it. Now, today's guest is Suja of Lux Capital, and she is a real estate investor, syndicator, and educator as well in the apartment and self-storage syndication space. Uh, she is also a fellow podcaster. I was on her podcast, Passive Income Unlocked. Uh, let's see, that was back in episode 32 in 2021. She is nearing 400 episodes uh, that she has released, so be sure to check those out. Uh, you can find her podcast in the show notes. Uh, also listen to it on YouTube if you prefer that as well. Now, Suja's tagline has been closing the investing gap one investor at a time. Now, I'm not going to get political, but I think we are all aware that there is a wealth and income gap in this country. And it does seem to get worse, you know, year by year, generation by generation. You know, the old the cliche, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. And government politicians seem to think that they need to fix it. They could wave a magic wand. And whether it's distribution or excessive taxation, whatever, then the rich will get poorer, the poor will get richer, and we will just live in utopia. <laughs> uh, I don't think that is realistic at all. And I really think that this just comes down to lack of financial education, not lack of money. As we've seen with the Federal Reserve the last uh, three years, uh, money has been very, very abundant that has been released into society here in the United States, as well as worldwide, whether it's the uh, European Central Bank, take your pick on uh, which central bank. And this has also led to numerous inflationary hardships throughout the world. Um, like I said, I just really think that this and really, truly believe that this gap between the haves and the have nots, if you will, really just comes from lack of financial education not the lack of money. We are not taught about money in schools. If we are taught anything, it is from our parents. And many times that comes passed down generation after generation. 
So the lessons that your parents learned from their grandparents might be passed on to you and you pass on to your kids. And whether they're good lessons, bad lessons, uh, great money management tactics or not so great money management tactics, you know, this just seems to kind of um, snowball the problem from there. But really, I again, I will say it again. This is from lack of financial education, not from uh, lack of money. Uh, for proof, just Google uh, Money Honey Rachel. Uh, she never made more than $40,000 a year, and that was pre-tax. So that was what she grossed. Then he had the FICA, the state, the federal taxes after that. Uh, so on paper, she was pretty much living in poverty. But she was able to build up uh, $20,000 a month in passive income streams. Uh, I'd almost call that a passive income uh, waterfall at that point. Uh, this was by the time she was 27. So, you know, wasn't born into money, uh, wasn't a big inheritance, uh, didn't make, you know, six-figure job, didn't go for a, you know, doctorate or become a lawyer or anything like that. So I think, uh, you know, like I said, just Google her, Money, Money Honey Rachel. Uh, I might include a link to the show notes here as well. But I just think that is proof that anyone with the desire, the motivation, the financial education, and probably even the right mentorship can succeed in this great country in the United States. And whether you start with a dollar or $10 million, uh, you can become financially independent or you could go broke. Uh, on the flip side of that, with saying, you know, the $10 million, you could actually make up to $12 million per movie, uh, like Nicolas Cage. Uh, again, Google him. Hey, there's no shortage of information on him, of how he squandered his wealth on uh, castles in Europe to a pet octopus. Uh, yes, he really did have a pet octopus. Uh, again, just Google that. Not about how much money you make. It's about how much you keep. Uh, how much you can have grow into additional passive income streams. And with those passive income streams, I do like Stooges um, saying, passive income buys back your time. And in fact, she actually has this as an opener for every single one of her podcasts that I've listened to. And that is exactly what passive income does. When you have enough passive income that pays for your monthly recurring bills, you are freed from the shackles of a W-2 job, which, uh, by the way, especially when you factor in the 15.2% total FICA tax, W-2 jobs and W-2 income are the highest taxed form of income out there versus interest payments, royalties, rent payments, uh, business income, etc. cetera. Uh, once you have your passive income uh, meet or exceed your recurring monthly bills, you can do what you want, when you want. Uh, this is why I've created the Wealth and Freedom Nexus uh, podcast, the blog, the website, to educate and inspire others in pursuit of financial freedom, one bill at a time. Now, as a final note for this podcast, a little bit shorter today, to keep the SEC happy, uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, Suja and I will be speaking in generalities in relation to uh, syndications that she offers. Um, I've had a relationship with her for over two years. I've followed her work. Uh, so I was able to invest in one of her 506B offerings. Uh, 506B, uh, you don't have to be accredited. 506C, uh, where a lot of syndications are these days, uh, you do have to be an accredited investor in order to partake. But on the flip side, with the lovely SEC rules, for whatever reason, 506Bs uh, can't be advertised to the general public. So if you see an ad on Facebook, uh, generally speaking, this is probably going to be a 5060, might be a Reg A, uh, depending on the filing timelines that they had in there. So 506Bs, in short, many people can invest in it. Might have to be what's called a sophisticated investor, but you don't have to be a, an unaccredited investor. So if you want, feel free to reach out to Suja, check out her website, uh, her podcast. I highly recommend and connect with her on LinkedIn like I did and see if her syndications, uh, her relationships, her partners, her uh, investment teams are up your alley. If it's something that you want to put your uh, investment dollars in, whether it's uh, from your bank account or like I have done from my self-directed retirement accounts uh, that I've invested with. So with that, we'll get into today's interview with Suja after a word from our sponsors here. 
Have you ever wanted to invest like the wealthy and how the 1% do, but think it's out of reach for you? Do you desire a more abundant lifestyle, but think you can't afford it? If so, check out ECI Development. With over 20 years of international real estate experience, Mike Cobb and his team can help you truly diversify your portfolio and lifestyle. How about benefiting from a generational investment that can 10x your wealth or more with a teak hardwood parcel in Panama or Nicaragua? Maybe it'll even lead to residency options in the future. Perhaps you'd be interested in a beachfront condo for under $250,000, enjoying the beautiful sunsets off the Pacific Ocean. Maybe an eco-friendly tiny home for around $100,000. ECI's team can even help you get financing for these investments. To learn more, check out the show notes or go to wealthandfreedomnexus.com slash ECI. Suja, thanks for coming on the show. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks, John. Great to be here. Yeah, you bet. Now, uh, like I alluded to in the intro, and you've also been a guest on my uh, YouTube show, uh, hashtag screw the W2. But uh, a lot of your concentration now is with your company, Lux Capital. And, you know, maybe you can give us just a quick background on what is Lux Capital and how did you start or what made you start, I should say. Absolutely. So Lux Capital is an investment firm and we have investors. So we gather investor capital and together we invest in recession resilient real estate deals. So we'll together we'll invest in an apartment complex or a self-storage complex or uh, a suite of deals, okay. including we might do mobile home parks, we might do um, short-term rentals. And so on a deal by deal basis, my investors will invest together and then we send out returns uh, cash flow during the life of the deal. And then I, and then there's usually a big payback at the end. Okay. Very cool. So, and I uh, probably should say too, uh, just again, full disclosure, I have invested with, uh, with Suja as well. So this was another reason why I wanted to bring her on the show. Uh, but actually that kind of leads me into my next question. Cause I've lost count of how many, you know, emails, Facebook ads, you name it that I've gotten like, Oh, this looks really good. And I've even seen investment thresholds as low as $1,000. But then the big but is you have to be an accredited investor, which unfortunately at this time I did not qualify for. You, however, through your you know platform, and I know this kind of changes from investment to investment, but you actually do uh, you know, cater and take on non-accredited investors. So what made you decide to take that route where I know you know we don't have to go down the rabbit hole, but the SEC does have more restrictions uh, more paperwork, more due diligence to take uh, non-accredited investors and run 506Bs. Yeah. Well, first of all, I wanted to be able to serve my friends and family. Okay. And I want to be able to serve people who are earlier on in their wealth building journey. Okay. And to become an accredited investor, for those of you who aren't quite familiar, you either need to have a million dollars of net worth outside of your primary residence, mm -hmm. married or um, single, or you need to have two or $300,000 if you're married and in net in income on an annual basis for the last two years. Yep. So a lot of people don't quite hit that, but they're still making good money mm -hmm. and they still have money that they want to put to work. And I wanted to be able to serve those people so that they could become, learn how to access this amazing investment vehicle and mm -hmm. become accredited investors soon. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. So um, now not the uh, and I'll just speak a little bit with the uh, you know, my experience, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I know I uh, partnered it with a self storage development, uh, for instance. And I think the original pro, pro forma, it was like a year or two before any returns was going to be you know established, but I think within like six or eight months off the top of my head, you had sent an email like, Hey, we're actually starting to get cash flow and you know, starting to. Uh, get some residual income from that. Uh, how are you able to, you know, get those returns to investors earlier than planned? Yeah, for sure. Well, with that particular deal, one reason that it's cash flowing earlier is because we were able to add a newly con a couple newly constructed assets to that okay. portfolio, and so it ended up being that even though the first deal that we were looking at was a new construction project and definitely wouldn't have cash flowed for a while. Okay. Um, we added some, and a part of the reason I did that is because I wanted my investors to have 
some ca- that experience of getting cash flow, even if it was going to be a small amount okay. earlier on, because I know that helps people feel comfortable to receive cash flow, and it makes sense. But on the other side of that, we also, you know, our operator did execute their construction, their new construction plan very quickly, mm. and they were very expedient in that. But still, construction does take time, and it, if anybody's, you're not. It's really not supposed to be, um, if you're getting returns during construction, (laughs) that's actually just return of capital, right? And so you need to be aware of that. Um, And so it's not prudent to make distributions on a new construction project if you're you're not accepting rents, right? And so that's why I added that other property because I wanted my investors to have the experience of getting cash flow. Okay, sounds good. So to uh, kind of borrow from, I don't know, Jim Cramer euphemism, if you will, he always uh, had UPOD uh, under promise and over deliver. Would that be kind of like uh, something you strive to where you try to be a little conservative, but if things change, things go ahead of schedule, it's, you know, even better for the, in- for the investors. Yeah, that's definitely always the goal is to under promise and over deliver. And I would say 99% of the time we're able to do that. Um, now there are times when things don't go exactly as according to plan. Like we're real estate investors, we solve problems. Mm -hmm. And that means that sometimes the problems are going to be problems that we didn't quite foresee. (laughs) (laughs) That's just part of the game. And so the the sponsor team capable enough to handle those problems and ultimately have a good result for investors. And so while we always strive to under promise and over deliver, I can't say that it happens a hundred percent of the time. Sure. Yeah. And just within, you know, I'm sure any, anyone out there understands with any investing, there's no such thing as a risk-free investment. Or if you see a sponsorship that says guaranteed returns, uh, run away. There's no such thing as guaranteed returns, but you know, just like you alluded to, you can always do your due diligence, uh, you know, check out the operator, check out the projects, uh, see what other deals they've done before you, hand over your hard-earned money at that point. Yeah. And I think that's the key is that most people who are busy professionals don't have the time to really get their head in the space, understand how to vet operators, make sure that they're comfortable with operators, right? It's just a flashy presentation can look good (laughs) Yeah, and might not have the time or the bandwidth to really go into and go and meet the sponsor and um, do a background check on them and look, look, look through their whole due diligence files um, and do a full thorough review, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what someone like myself does is we do the full due diligence Mm -hmm. so that we can, uh, and we use our, I use my 10, 15 years experience in the industry to vet operators so that we're making smart decisions and so that we're making sure that we invest in deals that are going to perform in the long run. All right. Sounds good. Now uh, you've kind of alluded to a little bit of, you know, self-storage, you know, mobile home, uh, short-term and long-term multifamily, just kind of a few uh, segments that you're uh, involved or invested in. Are there, you know, for starters, was there anything I missed there, but as we're going into 2023 and beyond, are there any uh, additional projects you are looking at or hoping to bring to fruition? This show is brought to you today by Lightbulb Podcasting. Are you a busy professional that needs to get more time back in their schedule? If you are a podcaster like me, you have enough on your plate. Why not outsource your podcast production? From editing, show notes, keywords, scheduling, volume balancing and editing, and creating audiograms, podcast production is another job in and of itself. That's why I use Lightball Podcasting. Get phenomenal support at an affordable price while you concentrate on growing your brand. Go to www.lightbulbpodcasting.com today to schedule an introductory call. Put your content in the spotlight. Yeah, for sure. Well, we are looking at a short-term rental portfolio right now, which is a exciting because it's how I replaced my W-2 income was through Mm -hmm. short-term rentals, but, and I've been looking for an opportunity that I want my investors to be investing in. And so we now have that opportunity. Okay. Um, And the second We're also doing build to rent, which is kind of part of multifamily. For those of you who aren't familiar with that particular niche, it's when you build a townhome type style complex, but instead of selling them, you rent them out. Mm. And it's very popular because people who can't afford to, 
there's many people who can't quite afford to buy a house, but they still want to live in a house yep. and they want to have that experience of, of living with their own four walls mm-hmm. and having a yard and having a garage and, uh, but they're not ready or don't quite want to buy a house just yet. And so built to rent is, um, it's an exciting multifamily. It's related to multifamily. It's an exciting sure. multifamily asset class. Okay. Yeah. And I've, uh, looked into that as well and probably be investing that here in, I don't know, mid to late 2023, if everything goes well. Um, I know from talking to other providers, you know, the build the rent, um, on the investor side, it usually helps as far as numbers where a brand new build is cheaper insurance usually because everything's up to code. You, you know, why you shouldn't bank on it? You usually have one to two years of cheaper property insurance or excuse me, property taxes because the assessor still has it assessed as a bare lot or an infill lot. But then also for the people moving in, I've heard various statistics. I don't know if you've seen anything particular, but that the average tenant's in general stays in a house, you know, two and a half years, but if it's a new build, you know, fresh paint, they're the first people to live in that house. They really take care of it. They tend to stay more in the four to five year range. Have you seen that or heard that those same statistics? Yes, I have. I think that the build to rent communities are stickier for Mm. that reason, because they are so nice and And people are able to maintain them to the standard that they want to continue to live in. And it just feels like their home when they move into it in an almost brand new property. It feels more like it's their own. Right. No, it makes sense. So now, as uh, you know, we kind of allude to a little bit and I've had uh, various podcasts, uh, you know, as far as what's a 506C, what's a 506B, you know, credited, not accredited, all that fun stuff. And just so we're keeping, you know, the SEC happy, you know, so you're not advertising anything. And obviously with the 506B, you have to have a pre-existing relationship um, in that. But if there's, um, maybe I'll just word this carefully. If there's anyone out there that's maybe looking to find a home for capital and interested in networking with you, maybe learning what new opportunities are out there, what's the best way to reach out to you in Lux Capital? Absolutely. So you can email me at sujata at luxe-cap.com. So that's S-U-J-A-T-A at luxe-cap.com. You can also hop on my my email list, which you can access at my website. And you uh, feel free to reach out on LinkedIn and I would be happy to get you, um, get to know you, understand your investing goals. And, mm. um, you know, if it's a good fit, then we can see about sharing more investment details with you. Sounds good. Yeah, I think I'm going to attest to the LinkedIn because I believe that's how we first connected whenever that was. And then you had me on your podcast. Obviously, now you're on my podcast. So uh, just kind of with that networking and, you know, associating with different operators. Uh, If you're not an accredited investor, essentially, that's the way you get in the game of just you know, network more, expand more, create those existing relationships. And then you're able to get into investing opportunities that are not available on, shall we say, typical Wall Street investments. For sure. Networking is so key, especially if you're, I mean, whether you're accredited or not, but especially if you're not accredited, you're not going to have access to those deals unless you actually start to get to know people who are offering them. And, you know, I do have a lot of people who sign up for my list, but then they never book a call, right? Sure. They're never going to see those um, uh, investment opportunities. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So take, uh, I think our first call was 10, 15 minutes. I think if I remember correctly. So yeah, just, uh, you know, take action, get on the email list, uh, reach out to, uh, Lux capital, uh, reach out for a phone call and, uh, take action. If you're looking for investment opportunities versus the typical stock market, uh, uh stock market returns. So right. yes, absolutely. We, um, are really happy with our track record so far and, <laughs> Um, we are just excited to be helping people grow their wealth and really helping people snowball their wealth in a way that is, um, less unnerving than the stock market. You know, and I think that's one of my main reasons for being in real estate is that I just don't trust the stock market, you know, and I know it was really good for people for many, many years there, but it's so volatile and you just never know where it's going to go. Right. Yeah. When it's going to hit. And so it's, um, even people can predict it and they can guess all the time, but ultimately it still feels like a casino to me. <laughs> Whereas with um, real estate, I feel like it is something that I have control over and something yeah. that is 
less volatile because it's harder to sell, right? I think that's the key to understand about real estate is mm -hmm. because people can't just sell off their shares with a click of a button, Right. it's harder to make emotional decisions around it. So mm -hmm. um, that means that it's just less volatile and we can sleep easier at night. Yeah, no, I agree with that completely. Uh, at the time of this recording, I know uh, Meta stock has taken a bit of a haircut of like 25%. And, you know, like you said, with the control there, Mark Zuckerberg said that he's looking to put more in the metaverse and not going to be making money. It's like, well, that's not exactly something you want to tell investors. But again, I don't have much control over what Mark Zuckerberg does, but you yourself as an operator have a lot more control as far as what are we investing in? What operators are we looking at? So on and so forth. Yes. And we also don't know exactly what's going to impact the stock market, right? Like what's happening on the other side of the world or, what's yep. happening, um, you know, something could happen at any point that just throws the stock market into a tailspin. Yep. And for me, I just feel much better having the absolute bulk, like 99% of my assets in real estate yep. compared to the stock market. Yeah. Makes sense. Not quite that high, but definitely the majority of my assets are in real estate and definitely highly recommend it. So. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks again, uh, Suja. I won't take up any more of your time and uh, wish you all the success here in uh, 2023 and uh, beyond with Lux Capital. Okay. Thank you so much, John. Great seeing you again. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Listeners. Thank you for listening. Be sure to share, rate, review, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. For more updates, check out www.wealthandfreedomnexus.com. Remember, Nothing on this show should be considered tax, legal, investment, or professional advice. This show is produced solely for educational and informational purposes. Please consult an appropriate and licensed tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for specific advice for your situation. For distribution or publication rights or media interviews, please contact the host.